he's really the the epitome of devotion. That's that's what makes Hanumanji so special. Yes, he's got lots of powers, and yes, he's got such a an incredible divine history. But when we when we worship Hanumanji, we worship him with the the feeling of oh God, oh Hanumanji, give me also that devotion. Give me also that ability to be so dedicated to God. I remember when I when I first came to India and I had been here maybe maybe only a few months and Puja Swamiji would say to me, you know, you're gonna you're gonna do great things in the world. You're gonna touch people and transform people and I was I was a 25-year-old academic and I kept saying to him no Swamiji I mean that's so sweet and thank you so much for saying that but you know really no and yes I know how to get A's in school and I'm not being you know sillily self-deprecating it's just that no I don't have it in me to be or do that which you're talking about and but every once in a while it would it would come up again and again he would say oh you know you're going to you're going to really just touch people and do such wonderful things in the world and make such a difference and again i would say oh that's so sweet and you know and you're my guru and that's why you say it and you've got divine eyes and you know it's like your mother saying oh you're so beautiful and you know, you love it because you love that your mom loves you. And I loved that I had a guru who could see the divine. And But to me, there was, there was no way that I was going to be able to do or be what he was talking about when he would say, you're going to really, you know, touch people and do such great things. And... I just kept thinking of it as, oh, I've just got the sweetest guru in the world and he's just got, you know, such such divine vision that even when he sees someone who, yeah, is a good academic and can take exams well and memorize facts well, but, you know, doesn't have that much else really going for, her, that even in that person he can see divinity. And that was sort of how I was thinking in my mind for the first many months. And then one day he gave me a copy of the Ramayana. And it was a, a very simple copy, not quite a children's book. I mean, it wasn't a comic book by any means, but it was very simple. It was only maybe, I don't know, 150, 200-ish pages. And... He said, here, read the Ramayan. This is a very, a very famous epic, a very important epic in our, in our tradition. And I read and I read and I stayed up all night reading. And in the Ramayan, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, I mean, Hanumanji is the hero. He, he's the one, I won't go into the whole story now, but he's the one who really saves the day. I mean, Lord Ram is divine, of course. So on, on the one hand, you could say it's all his Leela. And yet, on the other hand, here, his wife has been abducted by this demon king and she's being held hostage. And, you know, and Hanumanji's the one who's the hero, and he, he flies across the ocean when there's no bridge, and he goes to Lanka, and he, he's really this incredible hero, and he does so many miracles in the, the Ramayana. And I stayed up all night reading it, and the next morning I went to Swamiji with just tears pouring down my eyes, and I said, 
wow. I said, what, maybe what you, what you say is right. I said, because here's, here's this, this monkey. Hanumanji's the, you know, in the shape of a monkey and the form of a monkey. Yes, he's divine, but the form is a monkey. And, but he did all these miracles, miracles that monkeys can't do. And in my favorite story of the Ramayana, at the end of the war, when Hanumanji's been the hero, and people say to him, how did you do this? You know, you are, you are such a hero, Hanuman. You flew across the ocean and you made yourself enormous and you made yourself tiny. And when we needed the Sanjeevani for Ram's brother Lakshman to bring him back to life, you brought the whole Himalayas, you carried the whole Himalayas in your hands. And when you had to get back before sunset, well, no problem. You just took the sun and you stuck it under your arm and you prevented it from setting. And, and how did you do do all these miracles. Well, Hanumanji said, he said, I just, I just took God's name. I took Lord Ram's name. And it happened. And that for me is really the, the message of not just Sundar Khand, but the message of life, the message of devotion, the message of miracles, whether miracles outside, miracles inside, is it's all there with us. Hanumanji didn't say, oh, well, you know, I did this or I did that or I learned this or I swallowed those pills or, I, you know, whatever. Just, I had to fly across the ocean. I just closed my eyes on the shore and took Lord Ram's name and put my foot down and I flew. It happened. And that's, that's the power of devotion. That is the miracle. You know, so many people say, does, you know, does your guru do miracles? And, you know, we want to see miracles. And how do we know something's real till we see a miracle? And really what the, the message is, is that miracle's in us. The miracle is the faith. The miracle is the devotion. So I very, very strongly recommend, again, whether you know the Ramayana or don't, whether you speak Sanskrit or you don't, at least for some time after dinner or before dinner, go and sit and just just listen, listen to it, because that's that's how we make our lives beautiful is through devotion.